Hey, what's up, guys? 98 Sports Talk here. I wanted to talk about uh, how the SEC finished up in recruiting for National Signing Day and just give you know give you guys some winners and losers. Um, and, and to be honest, I, I really don't see any big-time losers. Uh, I'm going to start off, and some of you might disagree with this one. Uh, the, the biggest loser to me is actually Alabama. Um, and you've got to put that in, in context uh, simply because Alabama has had the number one ranked class for I, God knows how long. I, I don't know what it's been, like seven, eight years, something like that running. So anything less than that, obviously, is going to be a loss. Uh, but Bama's still going to reel in about probably the third or fourth or fifth rest, best uh, ranked signing class in the country for 2018 when it's all said and done. So, you know, Bama being a loser, again, just, you know, don't go crazy, Bama fans. Keep that in context. Um, Bama still had a really, really good class signing guys like um, Yabi Anoma, Patrick Sertain uh, Jr., Stefan Wynn. Um, I, so, so again, you know, say that, that Bama is a loser, uh, you know, again, they're, they're not such a big loser. I mean, signing a top five class is still fantastic, but you know, everything, everything consider, considering they have had the number one class for, a, you know, a long time running, they are the biggest loser in the SEC. The next biggest loser for me, again, is not really in, in same thing with Bama. They're, they're clearly not losers. Okay. They're just down from where they've been. But, you know, I think Tennessee is a slight loser here uh, simply because they seem to have a lot. You know, Jeremy Pruitt seemed to have built a lot of momentum. He brought in a lot of recruits for, for visits, a lot of big-time recruits. But ended up, you know, in the end, basically he ended up signing none of those guys that, that he really wanted to get. Um, that being said, Tennessee is still going to have a top 20 class or, you know, right around 20, somewhere like that. And Tennessee still did get Alante Taylor, who's an athlete who's probably going to play wide receiver, might play cornerback. And they also got J.J. Peterson, a nice uh, four-star linebacker from the state of Georgia. So, you know, Tennessee was, uh, you know, I, I say they're a loser because they, they just, you know, Tennessee did not get... Um, any of the final pieces that they wanted to get didn't get Quay Walker and, and some other guys. So um, only a slight loser there from Tennessee, obviously. And I've said it in my previous videos. I think Tennessee is in very good shape for the future with Jeremy Pruitt. So lots to look forward there too on Tennessee side. And as far as the rest of the SEC goes, I don't. I, I really don't think there's any more losers. Um, could be debatable if you want to throw LSU in that class because they did lose Patrick Sertain Jr. to uh, Alabama. Every, you know, a lot of LSU fans thought that they would sign Sertain Jr. and that you know he ended up choosing Bama. Supposedly that was a tough decision, and it came down to maybe a last second decision for Sertain Jr. Um, you know, he he may have uh, flipped in, in the the very last uh, night. Uh, right before uh, signing day, right before his commitment. But um, LSU still had, you know, a, a nice class. They'll probably finish around 15th in the nation, signed Kelvin Joseph, a safety, and Terrace Marshall, a big-time five-star uh, wide receiver. Although LSU still needs a quarterback. I, I don't know what they're going to do about that, but that's been LSU's problem for a long time. Coach O needs to, uh, you know, fix that problem or he will be gone um in the, in the next few years as well but you know i, I assume that quarterback's got to be his top priority and i'm sure they'll be already you know looking for that for the 2019 class now for the big winners uh in the sec i think uh south carolina is a winner south carolina brought in rick sandage there at the at the at the end on on signing day at about two o'clock sandage is a big defensive tackle from the state of North Carolina. He was making his decision between Georgia and South Carolina, and he ended up choosing the Gamecocks in the end. And I think it's a good class for uh, Will Muschamp up there in South Carolina. I think I think South Carolina, while they aren't going to be one of the top teams, at least not yet, I do think they are trending upwards, and they had a good class, you know, and again, they'll cl their class will come in ranked about 20th in the, in the nation. And and you know that's where you need to be if you want to compete uh, in the in the SEC. You need to be somewhere in that top twenty. Obviously, the the higher you go, the the better off you're going to be. Um, another winner for me is Auburn. 
Um, they signed guys like Joey Gatewood, an athlete, Matthew Hill, big time wide receiver, and uh, and and Quintus Miller, a big time uh, defensive tackle. So Auburn's going to be fine. They got a lot of highly highly rated four star guys. Um, you know, just you know, not 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 the five star guys, but again, big time four star guys. So Auburn's going to be fine. Auburn is going to end up with about somewhere around eleven the 12th best class in the nation. So Auburn certainly is not going anywhere. And they're, they're a winner to me uh, for the SEC on signing day. Another winner is Texas A&M. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, you know, Jimbo Fisher's new there. He's, uh, you know, gotten, gotten his feet on the ground now and he's started to sign some guys. And, and the biggest get for him was Leon O'Neill Jr. O'Neill Jr. was, you know, pretty pretty much once once uh, coaches and, and everyone saw him at the uh, Under Armour game, everybody wanted him. He supposedly showed out. Uh, he is a big time safety, although he's not even a five star recruit. But according to everything I saw, he should have been a five star recruit, and this guy's going to be special. So a big get there for Texas A and M, and A and M's going to end up signing about the fifteenth ranked class in the nation. So they are going to be on the up, you know, clearly trending up in the SEC. Um, you know, Jimbo Fisher, will be, I'll be curious to see what he can do in the next uh, two to three years. He's got a really tough schedule at the beginning of uh, 2018. So I don't think, you know, a and is going to be making too much noise here this coming year. But two years from now, look out. I mean, we'll see what uh, Texas A&M can become under Jimbo Fisher. And for me, the, the, you know, Florida was another winner. Although Dan Mullen got off to a slow recruiting start there and wasn't, you know, seemed to be Tennessee was kind of making the headlines with Jeremy Pruitt. He seemed to be the more flashy, uh, I guess, recruiter there when, it, when you compare the two. But Dan Mullen ends up, you know, doing a better job in the end. And Florida's going to end up with a, somewhere around the 15th, you know, 14th. 15th, 16th best uh, class in the nation. They, you know, and Dan Mullen had a huge win when he got Emory Jones to flip from Ohio State. And I do believe Emory Jones, even though he is a true freshman, I do think that Emory Jones is going to come in and be the starting quarterback for the Gators in 2018. Also, another big time get was Trey Dean. He's a big time safety. And Jacob Copeland, who was choosing between Alabama and Florida chooses the Gators. So a big get there for Dan Mullen and staff. And I think, you know, uh, Dan, I think Dan Mullen, give him, you know, a couple of years and he'll have the Gators back, you know, where, you know, challenging for the East right now, I think Georgia's is going to be the, uh, the top dog there on in the East for this for 2018, but we'll see what happens uh, down the road. Obviously Georgia's not going anywhere and I'm about to talk about Georgia, but Tennessee, Florida should come up. They should, uh, you know, be trending up. And I expect those two programs to certainly challenge Georgia for the East in the future. And look out for South Carolina, too, as well. I, you know, a lot of people um, dish on what Will Muschamp is, you know, did down in Florida. Um, I think he just had some bad luck down there with his quarterback and just never got the offense going. But he's clearly a good defensive coach. Um, and I think South Carolina, you know, will be a team that uh, other East teams, you know, won't want to face as well. So the SEC East is clearly getting better. The West is, you know, clearly a very good uh, division right now. So the SEC is in really good shape looking forward to the future. You know, I think over the past couple of years, there's been de some debate on, you know, what's who's the best conference in the nation. Is it the Big Ten or is it the SEC? I still believe it's the SEC. I believe it's been the SEC all along, although I will say the Big Ten has been pretty darn good, and, and you could make an argument for the Big Ten uh, being the best conference last year. But I think going forward uh, with Jeremy Pruitt um, at Tennessee um, and Florida coming up, and then tech, you're going to see Texas A&M making a huge improvement, I don't think there's going to be any doubt going forward that the SEC will be the best conference in the nation maybe maybe not this uh 20 you know for 2018 season there there may still be some debate i think 2019 you're going to see the sec back on top and i don't think there's going to be any doubt 
uh, who the best conference is going to be by 2019. And again, but again, I, I don't think the, you know, the, the SEC to me in 2018 will still be the best conference, even better than the Big Ten. And lastly, the, the biggest winner is Georgia. That's, a, that's an obvious one for the SEC. Uh, dogs go, go crazy signing seemingly everybody that Kirby Smart wanted to get. He gets um, Justin Fields, the nation's number one quarterback. Zamir White, nation's number one running back. Uh, Georgia loads up at linebacker with guys like Quay Walker, Brenton Cox, um, uh, uh, Channing Tendall from the state of, uh, I think, South Carolina is where he's from. Um, Tyson Campbell, also a huge cornerback, five-star corner. And Georgia loads up on the offensive line, signing five offensive linemen. Two of them uh, are five-star guys. So Georgia just has a huge grab, and Georgia will have the nation's number one signing class, I believe, when it's all said and done. So I think Georgia's the clear biggest winner uh, for the SEC. But lot, lots of good news for, for you know, all, pretty much every team around the SEC. Even, like I said, Bama and Tennessee were kind of the, the two losers that I mentioned. And in reality, I mean, they're, they're not losers. They just didn't, you know, Jeremy Pruitt just didn't have enough time to finish his class off and didn't get those guys that he wanted. And again, how can you really call Bama a loser when, you know, they're going to end up signing, you know, what's what's going to end up being the fourth or best class in the nation. So that's my, rec you know, SEC recruiting uh, update, national signing update. Um, look, you know, things look great for the SEC going forward. And, and I totally expect the, you know, the SEC to continue its dominance of college football. If you guys like this video, Give me a uh, thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Trying to get this new channel going. It's going to be heavy SEC football talk um, and some, you know, some national, uh, you know, stories smattered in and, and some other content. But hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.